Hi, welcome back to the Clean Classics Workshop. This time we are going to have a good look at the Series 2A, which we've now completed the dry build on. We've also had a new arrival for the next conversion, which is a Series 2 109 that's been retrieved from a hedge in an unknown part of Kent. So yeah, we're going to have a sort of go through of, of the progress on this and, and our plans moving forward, and then, and then what we're going to be doing with that 109 project, which is, uh, yeah, it's going, to be, it's going to be a good one, that one. So the Series 2A, we have now completed the dry build. The, the purpose of this stage of the project is there's various parts we've straightened out, various parts that are, that are new to replace parts that weren't good enough. There's, this is also a bit of a mishmash from a couple of different cars to get the project together. So the purpose of this dry build is to get everything together and make sure it all actually, all the bolt holes line up, all the simple bits actually work together. We can get everything aligning before it's all painted and doing that process means you're then going to be risking damaging and well and quite frankly actually damaging the nicely freshly painted parts you want to just bolt them all together perfectly painted and be job done so this part of the build is to ensure that the final build just all goes together beautifully and we know that everything works to this point on this project we have fully stripped two vehicles the reason it was two vehicles is we had the donor vehicle had a fantastic older gal chassis that was really strong um, it, it had some great uprated suspension that wasn't that old so it was a really good sort of running gear starting point the drawback of that is the panels were were pretty battered we then just through through more luck than judgment um, came across a car that was going cheap and had beautiful panels but a horrible chassis and running gear so the two of them made a good way to put one good car together so what we've done is we've taken that good chassis and the good running gear we've fully stripped it apart the older gal chassis has had just a clean up and a lick of lick of uh paint to just tidy it all up and make it look good as new We've then fully rebuilt the axles, replaced bearings, seals, gone through the whole lot. And we've also replaced all the bushes for poly bushes. The brakes have been gone through and redone. This has actually got an aftermarket disc brake system. We actually believe they're, they're, they're not aftermarket, they're Santana disc brakes, interestingly. That took us some time to figure out where to get the brake pads from. We know now. But for those of you who don't know, Santana was a company in Spain that bought the rights to manufacturing Land Rovers to, to, to the spec for series Land Rovers. So moving up from the, the suspension, the axles and the chassis, we've also gone through the steering system and, and refitted seals and bearings where required there. And then effectively it was an exercise in getting all the panels together, choosing the ones that were going to be a good starting point, and then it's got decades and decades worth of dings and bends here that have been straightened out. There have been some panels that just weren't quite worth all the, all the time to get them straightened out. So like this front quarter here, we've just got a replacement panel. This outer wing here is a replacement panel as well. The doors have been replaced. So, so it's a way up as to whether it's worth the time or not to, to, to repair or replace. So we've got some and some here. Effectively, what we have now is a set of panels all the way around the car that are straight enough to then move on to the painting process where they'll be flatted back, a little skim of filler to take out any, any, any smaller undulations or, or, or imperfections, and then a beautiful coat of paint can go over the top. Those of you who've seen some previous videos will have seen we ended up replacing the bulkhead for this one for, for a new galve bulkhead. We did start the repair on the original bulkhead However, as we got into it, as we blasted bits back, we realized it was going to be quite an undertaking. So in terms of the sort of time frame of this project, we ended up just going for a new Galve one. We also reskinned the rear door. That had a bunch of holes drilled in it that, that were just a bit of a mess. So we just, it was simple enough to, to replace that outer skin. It gave us an opportunity to, to ensure that the, the frame of the door was, was sound as well. So, so that, was, that was a good thing to do and we've replaced the rear tub floor and and done some um, substantial repairs to the seat box as well so there's there's been a lot of work <laughs> to get at this point it's been a bit of a, a a project for us to learn on and it's certainly been an education in how much time these projects eat up but i'm really excited to see once this thing's painted it's going to be something to be really proud of and and uh and yeah i'm very 
very sure our customers can be very happy with it. We talked about the restoration of the Series 2A, but obviously we will be electrifying it too. We have already basically got the whole EV system ready. I thought it'd be good to show the, the batteries that are ready for the system next to the car. This is 40 kilowatt hours of Nissan Leaf batteries repackaged to fit into a Series Land Rover. These two boxes here fit underneath the seat box, so where the fuel tanks originally live. Um, and then the rest of the battery sits just in front of the motor in the engine bay, sort of nestled low down behind the front axle. But yeah, it gives you an idea of what 40 kilowatt hours of batteries look like. It's a good couple of hundred kilos there. But yeah, once they're packaged, all repackaged in like this, it's really easy for us to then just bolt them into the car. So it's always exciting to do a new project introduction. This one's an interesting one for sure. So this one, we are basically, it's a from scratch build. This is the, the donor vehicle that we will be building the, the electric long wheelbase um, series two from. We're already starting to call it Project Pinky because of uh, obvious reasons, looking at the number plate. So yeah, obviously not in the best condition, this Land Rover. But the plan here is it's going to go on a shiny new Gal chassis, shiny new bulkhead, and then like we were talking about with the 2A, it's going to be a take a look at each panel and part of the car and make an assessment whether it's replaced for new or repair what we got. We chose this one because it's got quite a lot of straight panels on still like this. this uh, the, the tub here is looking like we can probably save quite a lot of. You might be able to spot with it on the trailer. It's not actually on any wheels. This car was sat on, on, its, on its chassis, no axles. The axles that we have for it are in the, the bed here. So it's effectively been tugged out of a hedge somewhere. And now it's our job to give it a full new lease of life and future-proof it as an electric classic. One of the areas in, in, a, in a build like this that we will be going into and, and extracting all of the parts is the interior. There's going to be the dials and, and all the sort of tricky to find other bits like the wiper motors and things that we can go in and, and take out, refurb um, and, and keep with the car. All of those fiddly little bits are otherwise really hard to find. Interestingly, this car has, uh, I presume, an aftermarket. I don't know if it's, if it's standard, but it's got a, a, a headlining and, and posh things like that you don't often find in a Land Rover. Anyone who knows about what that could be or where that could have come from, yeah, drop a comment. So the plan for this car is going to be a 40 kilowatt hour electric conversion, our, our standard package, and then it's going to have a canvas top. We're also going to be putting some teak flooring in and basically giving it all the works to make it a really special, customised car for the owner. So obviously this car is going to be resprayed. Whilst, whilst it's got quite a cool patina on it, it's, it's going to be resprayed. Now, originally we, we were discussing a sort of light blue color. However, with the number plate, and obviously it's, it's, we're not the first people to have this idea. I do think it might be quite cool as a pink car. <laughs> Let us know what you think in the comments. So what this project is really going to showcase well is what we really stand behind here at, at Clean Classics. We're taking a, a crash damage written off electric vehicle and converting that into a system that can fit into an old Land Rover. And we're also taking an old Land Rover that was destined for the scrapyard and giving it a new lease of life. So it's, it's all kind of that, that whole recycle, reuse ethos that will result in a, in a beautiful car to be used for, for many years to come. Thanks for watching. Really hope you've enjoyed this video. As always, please do like and subscribe if you've been enjoying the content we're doing. Head to our channel, check out some more videos. But liking and subscribing really helps us grow the, the platform. And yeah, we're really enjoying getting these videos out to you guys. So if you're enjoying them, please, uh, please uh, let us know.